Today's video was sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something that is highly anticipated and something that I have been dreading for a good period of time, which is redoing slash updating my portfolio. Now, as a graphic designer, it's pretty important that your portfolio stays up to date with all of your relevant work uh, because you never know when someone's gonna reach out to you and you wanna make sure that you have your best work in your portfolio and it's always like up to date. If you make a really cool project with someone, you can add it to your portfolio as soon as possible, but kind of a running joke in the design community is updating your portfolio is really hard. For some people it's really easy, but for other people it's really daunting. And for me, it is extremely daunting. And I go through like an identity crisis, like probably a few times a year and I want to redo my portfolio, redo my logo, like kind of go through like my own personal rebrand. And that's totally normal. I know a lot of other designers who deal with this too. So if you are one of those people, worry not you're not alone so if this is your first time watching i welcome you we talk about all sorts of things on this channel but mostly related to design and if you're putting together your portfolio for the first time or you are an experienced designer and you're updating your portfolio join us for this fun little ride and i'm just gonna go through this and show you how i'm gonna be updating my portfolio through my squarespace website and also like the tips and tricks that i use to make sure my mock-ups and everything look really nice and presentable and kind of like tips and tricks of like what to put in your portfolio because I know that is a very common question. I get a lot and I'll, it's a common question that people just have and it's a great question to have. So on the note of Squarespace, I want to thank them for being the sponsor for today's video. This is not a standard sponsorship, but this is a little bit bigger. I'm going to be working in Squarespace for a good majority of this video and showing you all of the back end of how I build things and how I'm going to be laying out my website and also uh, just some other like personal branding things that I'm going to show you. But yeah, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This truly means a lot to me. Squarespace is a rolling partner with me and they're really great to help you guys build your portfolios or whatever your online presence may be. That's what they're here for. So with all of that said, uh, we're going to start for me with some personal branding updates and what that kind of means and how you kind of approach personal branding. Like any of my design videos, I usually have a little doink with me. And I've got my Modelo in a nice little koozie. Yes, liquids around my new computer. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Get some ASMR. So personal branding. It's a whole entire beast to tackle. And I like to think, and also I know a lot of other designers think too, is that personal branding is one of the hardest things to do uh, because branding yourself makes you think a lot about who you are as a designer. And that's a really daunting task. I know when I was in school, I was in a branding class and we had to kind of tackle our own personal branding. And my first, like my first website was when I launched my own personal branding. And my first branding was pretty bad. I'll pop a picture of it up here. It was pretty bad. And for the time, I thought it was really cool. And uh, really, really early on, I had an even older logo, I'll put that here, which was not good. It used my last name and I just, it was terrible. It was generic, it seemed super amateur and it wasn't really representative of who I was as a designer because I didn't know who I was as a designer. And that's also a very normal thing to feel. Finding yourself as a designer comes with time and it has taken me, I have been out of school for almost four years and I still go through rebrands all the time. I have all sorts of identity crises. So that's very normal. So back to when I launched my first brand, it was this weird, like it was the peak of millennial pink. It was when the 1975's album, I Like When You Sleep came out. And I was like, yes, millennial pink is my color. And I already liked it to begin with. And when the 1975 released that album, I was like, yes, I'm gonna use this pink. And then I used that pink and I used like a really way far out of gamut, bright blue green color and yellow. I was really into like, I went through like this whole like CMYK phase and then I went through like this really wild RGB phase where I was like, yes, this is who I am. And that was my first, my first brand. That was my first like landing page on my website was that horrible graphic, that horribly dated amateur graphic. But I was stoked about it, which is exciting when you're starting out as a designer and coming together with your brand. I was like, yes, 
snaps all around for me. This is so great. But as time went on, I took a portfolio class when I was at Fitum and I had a identity crisis again a few months later and I made my second logo. I'll see if I can find a picture of it. I'll add it here if I can. It was like this K with this L kind of like staggered behind it and that's when I decided to drop my last name, which is Conway, and I opted to just use my first and middle name, which is just Kelly Lauren, and that has become part of my brand at, at this point, and that's because of Kellyanne Conway, who was kind of ruining me trying to become a designer because I did not want to be associated in any sense with Kellyanne Conway, and that was in 2016, going into that whole election, so I could not afford to have my name get mixed up with hers, especially in like search engines. I didn't want people searching for me as a designer and coming up with Kellyanne Conway. I wanted to avoid all of that, so I dropped my last name. That's part of personal branding. Those are decisions that you make if you want to do that, but of course, by all means, shorten your name if you can. It makes it a little bit fun, a little quirky, and you can have like a little bit more control if you didn't like your last name. Tip number one, so change your name if you want, or you can come up with like a little bit of a, a quippy brand name for your design work if you want. There's a lot of designers I know who have like cute little like so-and-so foundry or something for their design work, and that's also totally fine if you want to do that. But just keep in mind that you want to try to keep it as consistent across the board, whether that's on your business cards, any sort of marketing materials you might have, your website, and just like anything on your social media, you wanna keep all of that consistent. So whatever you go with, try to stick with it unless you wanna do a full rebrand a little bit later down the line. I am out of breath. So a few months after I graduated from FITM and I went through multiple logos already in 2016, I had the pretty much like a revelation of what my logo is now and I have liked it. I have stuck with it for the past almost four years because I liked it so much. I'll put it right here. It was very simple and it kind of tied in with all of my social media, which has just been Kel.Lauren for the longest period of time. And I wanted to keep that dot in the middle of my name, so I just had a K.L, and I use like, I can't even tell you what that font was. I made it on a whim at my old job when I was like supposed to be like going home or something and I stayed because I was like, I have to finish this logo. And so I stayed and finished my, what ended up being my logo. And then I kept it because I really liked it. It's really simple, it's pretty timeless. And it ended up kind of being like an interesting foreshadowing into the direction I ended up going with more of like my serious design branding, which is a lot more minimal and a lot cleaner, but also like I get pretty fun sometimes too. So that's what my logo has been for the past few years. If you've been on my website, you, that's the logo that you've seen and so you might already be familiar with it. And now that I am a little bit older and I'm a little bit more experienced, I want to upgrade my logo a little bit more. I already have one in progress so I'm going to show you guys how I brand that out into some business cards because your girl needs some new business cards and I have had so many encounters where I wish I had my business cards because I've been out for a long time and that's a good thing to have if you can invest in some business cards once you get your website solidified and like a phone number and email, everything, all that jazz, definitely get some business cards because yes, people can write your website down or write your Instagram handle down, but like truly a business card does mean a lot. I hang on to business cards um, and that does go a long way. So I'm gonna show you guys how I uh, am gonna be making my business cards. <laughs> so this is the logo that I've tentatively been wanting to go with. It's pretty straightforward. I found this awesome font it is called oh not the font I thought it was it's just a titling gothic and I wanted to stick with the same like dot period thing in the middle of my logo so it could be abbreviated down and shortened to something like this to either put on a business card or other sorts of like branded merchandise and also for my uh, fav icon or whatever favicon whatever it's called that you have on your website so that's tentatively what I have been wanting to go with so in regards to a business card I'm just gonna open up actually what size business card size three and a half by two inches okay okay so I might do four different options actually let's go with some vertical ones cool just copying and pasting my logos into this file I'm kind of torn so I might I'm just gonna do one of each I'm gonna make a black front of a card and then I'll do a white front and then generally the rule of thumb is that you want to still leave some white space on your card in case someone ever has to like right on it and so that is a principle that i do follow i think that's a good idea maybe i like it the other way like rotate it hey 
Hey guys, it's your girl in post. I realized when I made my business cards, I was stupid and put my actual phone number on there. So I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the business card process that I did. The business card we ended up going with was this one with the black front and on the back, it just has all of my info down here at the bottom. So we have a good amount of space right here for anyone to write whatever they need to, any notes that they might have on my business card. So then we go down here to my points of communication, my hierarchy, the main thing being my name, my brand, and what I do. And then the third most important thing that I wanna communicate is my website right here, or they can also contact me with my email and my phone number down here. So that is really it, it's a pretty simple business card and Thanks, okay, back to the video. Okay, so when you sign up for a website with Squarespace, they bring you to pretty much the simplest way to organize a website homepage. So I have on my left-hand side all of the different sections of the back end of your website. So I have my pages, which is, if you were to think of it in web, design uh, terminology, your pages is your HTML and your design is your CSS. It's the best, the best way to explain it because I, for a while I was like, what's the difference? Like why pages and design? Like why are they separate? And then I realized, oh, well that's, that's how websites are made. So um, we have the structure of the website and pages. We have the aesthetic, the styling, your cascading style sheets in the design section. And then the rest of this, if you're just doing a portfolio, not too much of this matters. Analytics is really great. And then settings and help and all of that stuff. But like the commerce, marketing, scheduling, not super important if you are just doing a portfolio like me. So just looking at my website right now, all of this work is super outdated. This is like, this was a branding project that fell through. This was a web project that I did ages ago. This was an app that I designed that I never made. Um, this was actual like content creation and like really good work that I did. Um, enjoyed this campaign a lot. These are some of my all time favorite photos that I've ever taken. Um, but this was for Casetify and then, oh, I guess I didn't need to do that. Maybe I can have a fixed header next time. And then I have like, this is a concept project from when I was in FITM. Um, it was a magazine that I made and then I was like, oh, well, I'll make it more about the 1975. How cool, but not a real project. And then I have the phone cases that I designed for zero gravity way back in the day when I had just gotten out of school. So, oh. Look at these little babies. A lot of scrolling, I'm not really liking that. I don't hate the way this website is laid out. I think this is a very simple layout. Um, all of my design work is on my homepage. So when you go to kellylaurendesign.com, this is the first page you see. And I like that. I You don't really have to click around too much to like see the rest of my work. You can just see like immediately what I'm about and the people I've worked with, blah, blah, blah. And then I have a tab up here for some photos that are outdated. Uh, back when I used to do flowers. I had a whole page on flowers. I've got a thing that opens up into my Instagram, another one that opens up to my YouTube channel, and then of course my about page and also a contact form. So more or less, I'm going to keep a lot of this structure the same, but I'm going to streamline um, a few of things. Like I'm going to keep the design tab, but here's the catch. This is something I've believed. And also I asked my friend, Julia Fletcher, I will leave her handle here. You should go check out her work and her YouTube channel too. If you want another cool, awesome woman in design, go check out Julia. I texted her and asked her what her advice would be for anyone who's building a portfolio for the first time. And let you, let, let me, let me read you what she said. Okay, so Julia says, my advice is to make sure your portfolio is reflective of the work you want to be making and are excited about because what you put into your portfolio is the kind of jobs you'll attract. This goes for resumes too. If you're deciding whether or not to put a project in your portfolio, ask yourself if that's the kind of work you wanna continue making. If not, leave it out. I could not agree with Julia's sentiment more. Now, when an employer is looking at your portfolio, you don't want to have a super extensive portfolio to where everything with the kitchen sink is in your portfolio. Keep it streamlined. I wanna be able to figure out exactly who you are in less than five minutes. Nobody's gonna give you that much time until you get to like an interview process or you're actually having like a client call. So keep it short. So if you are in doubt of whether or not you should put something in your portfolio, leave it out. A cleaner, simpler portfolio is better than then having some good projects and then other things you're not too excited about either. So this way back when is when I built 
or like when I built my website for what it is now is when I was looking for a job before I got hired at Live Nation. And the agency that I was at before I was at Live Nation, I cannot put anything that I made in my portfolio, which really sucks. So I have a really big gap in my professional portfolio because I spent a year doing work for this agency and none of it can be put in my portfolio, which really sucks. And we should really stop doing that. We should really let designers put work in their portfolios. So. I had to put a lot of filler content in my portfolio because it really, I had like so many gaps and I had nothing exciting. So at the time, this was stuff I was excited about. I was like, yeah, I wanna do more branding. I wanna do more web design. Maybe app design would be cool. I still like taking pictures, layout design, and also like product design. I like doing all those things. So all of this, I'm gonna be taking out because I want to streamline my entire portfolio to be as much as possible merchandise based uh, because that is what I I love doing and it is what I do at Live Nation. That's what I'm gonna be putting in my portfolio and that's the work I want to be attracting. So all of the work that I'm gonna be adding to my portfolio today is merchandise based. So if you've wanted to see some of the work that I've done for Live Nation, this is finally a video for you. So the way I wanted to segment my website was by merch, then potentially a posters tab. I don't have any official posters, but I have a lot of posters I've designed. Um, so I might include a posters tab. So it might be merchandise or just merch design, posters, press, because I have a few articles that have been written about me and I think that's a fun thing to include, photo, YouTube, and then my contact about page. So more or less like the same amount, I'm gonna probably take out my Instagram page because it seems unnecessary at this point. Um, and if you wanted to find me, it'd be pretty easy to find me. And I might just link it in a little like social media bubble in like my footer or whatever, or like on my contact page. Um, but I'm not gonna have it be like a tab up on my Oh no, my mom is calling me. Sorry, mom, I can't talk right now. We're gonna jump into the design tab and then go to the template page. So I have had this template, it's called Jasper. I've had it installed for over two years and you can see the other templates that I've had for the past four years. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate this template, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into install new template. Oh, does it not remember what my favorites were? This is, one I really liked. I really liked Avenue because I like the hover over effect and then um, just pulling up into like big, I want like big image based pages because all of my work are is just like a bunch of images. And then the cool thing about it is that I can preview it on what it would look like on an iPad and also most importantly, what it would look like on a phone. What I do like about Avenue is that it doesn't just have one big square. You can set it to have one big square, fill up the whole page. Um, but I like that it's still broken out into smaller sections. So like when I'm looking at a phone, I don't just see like one project. I wanna see like a bunch of different projects. There's that one I like. This is a really popular one and I think I might veer away from it because I land on websites like this all the time and I'm automatically thinking, oh, I know that's a Squarespace website and they just took the copy from the sample website and they were like, so-and-so is a designer and an illustrator in Houston, Texas, like that type of thing. So I just like, I like to find something that's a little bit, you know, not so template-y and that's the best thing about a lot of this is that it's fully customizable. So you can even take that out, but I think Avenue might be my best bet. Another cool thing is that on the side over here is that they have like your popular websites, the ones that people use often obviously, and then they have it segmented by like what they're generally geared towards. So depending on like what you're actually building your website for. This is another really great one too if you want a super simple website that are like single scrolling pages, just like as a fancy resume. This is one I have seen outside of just the demo site. So there's lots of stuff out there. I'm gonna go ahead and start with Avenue. All right, so I've gone ahead and set the preview for Avenue on my website. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, it says this template is only visible to you. So it's not active yet and it won't be active until I set it as a live template. So the first thing I'm gonna do move around in my chair a lot. Um, I'm gonna work from the top of the website down, work through some of the styling, and then I'm gonna start plugging in content. So the first thing I'm gonna do is edit my logo right here. I'm gonna just delete that and add a new logo. 
Now, normally I don't advocate for websites with a full black background because it can be hard on your eyes sometimes, but my opinion on that has changed because I've seen a lot of really cool websites that have their main color as black and then all of the text is white. And my website is gonna be mostly images anyway, so I feel like I could get away with it a little bit more. So I saved out my uh, logo in black and also in white so I can switch them in and out, but I'm gonna go with black for now, black on a white website just for now and then I'm gonna go down here to edit not that delete my favicon and then upload my new one which goes up in the tab up here and then I'm gonna keep my whoop, keep my Kelly Lauren art design because this is what's gonna be showing up when your website is searched in Google so hit save there ooh love that already pretty good sizing pretty happy with that my favicon still hasn't updated yet but that's okay so I'm gonna go down to site style so this is where like I've been toying about like switching it to just an all-black website Website. I'm kind of into that, but I might not do that towards until towards the end because a lot of the set stylings for the website are in black and I don't want to lose something. And there's a chance that I might lose something if I'm not careful um, and I don't want to forget anything. So let's see where that is. So my navigation color, so for my non-active, it's light gray. I wanted to play with like a lime green. I think that would be fun to have active. Okay, so now I need to find another font that pairs well with the font that I have for my logo, which might take me a second. I might go with a rock grotesque. Let's go with that, because it's pretty similar. Actually, for this, I might keep this as a light pink so I know I want to change it to white. back to home. Let's go into pages now. Okay, so this is where it gets fun. All right, so I've gone ahead and made a little bit of like a test page. So I made my page for a dead and company. I have my mock-ups that I made just kind of like cascading down the left side. I have my crew neck and my hoodie, and then I have my two pins down here. It's like downtown all over again. <laughs> and then I just have a little bit of a product description over here to the right, which pretty much just covers everything. And then down here, I still have the rest of my gallery to fill in. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so after you select a template, it'll have a bunch of these things that say demo next to it. So if you just click on it, it'll prompt you with copy page or remove. So you can remove it if you want, but I like to copy it so I can just kind of work within the template that they already built. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of their images. And I'm gonna drag my next set. Maybe we go with BTS for now, since there's just these two. So I'm gonna go and drag my two mockups into there, and then we just wait for them to load, which can take some time. I'm gonna edit my page info while I'm waiting. So my page title is BTS. My navigation title is gonna be BTS. My URL slug is gonna be BTS. I'm gonna enable that page. And then for my page description, which will be in the right hand side underneath that title, I'm just gonna write a little description. So, so this was a BTS tour and pop up tea. That wasn't the US tour, it's mostly US world tour. It was 2019. So I adjusted my hover to have a pretty high opacity so we can knock out a lot of that color. When you do hover, hover over it so it gets pretty dark and we can let that green text pop through because a lot of texture is gonna be behind the text anyway and I still want it to be a hover versus underneath. That's just personal preference. All right, there we go. So those two are all loaded, cool. All right, so let's go back over here. I'm gonna copy that page, delete theirs, and then who do we wanna do next? Maybe let's do Jonas Brothers. I'm gonna drag my Jonas Brothers comps in. I have three t-shirts for Jonas Brothers. Let those load, go ahead and head into my settings. I could put more info if I wanted to, like if I wanted to talk more about like the actual garments that they were printed on, but I'll spare you guys the boring details of that. And we'll move on. So we got dead, BTS, Jonas Brothers. Go into our next one.
All right, it is day two. I got a little too tired last night, so we're trying it again today now that I have some more energy. So where we left off on the site, we are building out my individual galleries. And so we have my Denko one up, the BTS one up, and the Jonas Brothers one up. And so I wanted to add the rest. So we're gonna go into pages, add new page, add a gallery. And so for this next one, let's go with Kesha. We'll grab those four, drag them in. While those are loading, I'm gonna go ahead and crack a cold one. Cool. I'm not worrying too much about the order of everything right now. I think I'll rearrange it once I have everything up so I can like visually lay it out so it's consistent across the board so I don't have like a, all of my older bands in one column or like a bunch of black tees in another column. I'll try to keep it, I try to keep some variety in it, so. Okay, so we've got Kesha all set. So let's go into our settings and add a description. So now when we go into Kesha, perfect. We got the T, we got this cool crew neck in there. Neat. Let's keep going. And all of my images are under like three megabytes. Um, I feel like sometimes like it might load a little slow even with that, but I know my what my personal Wi-Fi is really slow right now. Um, but try to keep those images like as low in size as possible, just so they don't bog the whole site down as they try to load. So like usually like under three megabytes, if you can get it closer to like two or even one without really compromising your image quality, go for it. So I'll probably leave that red crew neck as my thumbnail, just because I have a lot of black tees anyway, but I might change it up, who knows. Cool. So we got a nice blue hoodie to break up all of the black because I know a lot of my tees are gonna be on black, so I'm gonna try to keep some of them diverse. Get some pops of color in there. Next, let's do Poppy, my dear Poppy. Oh, did I not export that? One minute. <laughs> have to export something. Uh, in the meantime, I'll drag in my three-eyed cat I did for her. I mean, in the meantime, you guys can see how I built out my comps. So this is the front of my crew neck. This is a crew neck I just have around the house. It's an old vintage guess crew neck and it just had guess on the front and I just removed the text and then you guys can see that. So it's all in a mask. That's what it looked like. I shot it on my floor, threw a mask on it. Actually, that's what it originally looked like. That's with some color correction, desaturation, enable the mask and then I have an adjustment layer I have a fill for when I want to do a black crew neck so I got my layer overlaid there I have a textured wash and then my shadows depending on uh, a color the garment is and the effect that I'm trying to get on the print so these are just like different levels of multiply so I duplicated the original one and then just set it to multiply so I can get those really intense shadows coming through. So I'm gonna have my graphic on there. So now you can see like some of the texture in here versus if I didn't have any of that, it would look pretty flat. But if I activate those, that's what we get. Maybe, no, better. Yeah, I like that one better. Cool. All right, let's save this out. All right, cool. So you got that one in front, we got Poppy in. Actually, we didn't write any of the copy for Poppy. The copy for Poppy. All right, so we got those two in there. I'm gonna move the heart poppy to the front because I like that one more and I want that to show on the home page. Cool. Now we got two more to do and then we're gonna move into some of the other pages. All right guys, after some Wi-Fi technical difficulties, we are back on the site. Everything is now loading. Things are looking great. These are the only nine projects that I'm gonna be putting on the homepage for the merch. I'm gonna do another page for the posters that I've done, but they're on my other computer, so I have to go get them. So I'll show you guys the poster page in the final, the final show, but it'll be like the same format. I might just do like maybe a little bit of a different gallery just to display those posters, because I only have like four. So next we're gonna go into photo, which might really kill my wife. Wi-Fi, but we'll see. Um, so for photo, I'm gonna go into edit page content and then we're gonna add, hmm, can I do a wall? Oh, no, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that, no, cancel. All right, what I might have to do is I downloaded this program called JPEG Mini, which compresses your images to be kind of like as small as possible without compromising the quality. It did cut down on some of the file size for my other images, so I might try to do it again. 
if we need to. So going into my documents. Nope, that's not where it is. I moved it to my desktop. There it is. Okay, so for my photos, I have some cool things that I want to upload, like some GIFs of some images that I've taken and kind of like stylize them together to be GIFs. Uh, I've got a few like this. So I had another one. Where did it go? Oh, it's right there. So I got those three gifts that I think would be really fun in a big wall of photos if a few of them were moving. I don't wanna add too many photos cause it will make the site load really slowly. So I'm just gonna upload that GIF and see if my Wi-Fi hates me. All right, cool. So that one's uploaded. I really like how that looks. I think that's really awesome. So I'm gonna try to, I can decide which ones I wanna add. I really like that photo, but I also really like that one. All right, so I've had a good time rearranging some of these photos as the rest of them upload. I really think like having these like subtle gifts in here like really breaks up this kind of like wall of imagery. Um, as soon as all of them load and go in their proper order, um, I think this is gonna look really cool. Pretty excited about this. All right, so it looks like all of them are loaded. Oh, also a cool thing, like so you see the circles, you can shift like where you want the crop to be, which I think is really cool. Um, in case you have like an image like this, like I I want that image to be on my friend Chloe. I don't want it to be up here. I can't, so I can like kind of set that crop to be the way I want it to be, which is really awesome. Move that into the middle. I love that. So then we have the offset gifts. They're not directly underneath each other. We don't have two grass pictures next to each other. It's like planning an Instagram feed. Okay, I don't have a GIF for this set, unfortunately. Actually, I'll throw in more pictures of my friend Chloe up here. So perfect instance right here, so this image isn't properly centered, my fault. Um, so I can move the focus of that over ever so slightly. So it is centered. Same thing with this. I want that focus to be on her face, just like that. My hand is getting sweaty. Why is it so hot already? That rhymed. Bars! Bars! Bars. Now we're gonna go to the about page. My least favorite part about updating or writing any sort of resume or portfolio is the about page because I don't have like the confidence to write about myself. I don't like it. Always write about yourself in the third person. That's something I learned from one of my career classes. Nobody wants to hear you talk about yourself necessarily. They wanna hear like what someone has to say about you. So you write it from the third person. So I'll say Kel Lauren is a graphic designer based in Los Angeles. It's good to put where you are based. So if someone needed to kind of like meet with you really immediately, they know that like you're already in the city that they are or they don't have to like question you or anything. So Kellern is a graphic designer based in Los Angeles, California. She specializes in merchandise design because that is what I work on mostly and it is also what I want to continue working on. I want to keep getting clients that are merchandise based, whether that's like musicians or YouTube, whatever. Merchand merchandise design, uh, branding, and photography. I hate calling myself a photographer, but I do enjoy when people hit me up to hit take, to hit take photos. I do enjoy when people hit me up to take photos. It is always a good time. Kel has her associate of, got something in my eye, arts degree from the associates of art, associate of arts degree in graphic design from the Fashion Institute of Design ampersand merchandising. Fidem LA circa 2016. I'll apply that so that way I can kind of narrow down what specifically I want people to read when they are entering a form in my website. That way I can kind of trim down on the amount of emails that I get so I don't lose important clients. So 
great use of the drop down right there. So I'm gonna go hit save. Now, all of these fonts have to change, but I will change that back in my style sheet. Um, I might just straight up delete this because it's like, yeah, you know, it's this is an about page. Um, so I will try to get a photo for right here. Um, I might take one, but you guys will see that in the final walkthrough of the whole website. But cool, got that drop down down there working. And now the next thing I wanted to add was um, oh, a features page. Let's see, what, what do I like? Horizontal or vertical? So for my features page, I wanted to include, or just like, doesn't have to be in the features page, but I wanted to include some of the articles I've had written about me because that's something I'm pretty proud of. So I want to be able to showcase that. And it's also like a wing of my YouTube channel on there too. So it all connects back to my design. It all comes together. So I'll title this press. Nope, that's, I did not want it in there. I want it out there. Cool. So I'm gonna go and pull all those articles and I will show you how I plug them in here. All right, I took a picture for my about page and I also gathered all of my links and stuff for my press page. So I went ahead and figured all of this out ahead of time so I can just show you guys how to do it. So I already did the one that I did for my tampons um, for Fast Company. So for this one, I'm going to, okay, so I'll do my other feature in Fast Company right here. So I'm gonna edit this text to say, and then I have the article right here. So I'm gonna pull, pull like a little blurb. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull like this first little section. Save that, and then we'll do the last one. All right, saving that. So we've got the press page done. Now let's go to our posters. I have all of my content saved out, so I'm ready to upload it. So now I'm just gonna go in here. Let's see what type of thing do I want to add? I'll add a grid. Okay, so I've got these four posters that I'm gonna add. Now I know these aren't actual posters, like none of these are real things yet, but I do wanna add them because it's stuff that I'm really proud of and I'm really excited about, um, just so people can see a little bit beyond the bounds of what I can do of what's approved. And this way I can show just like, something that's a little bit zestier, something that's a little bit bolder that you might not see in a regular portfolio, so. So let's just review real quick of where we're at. Go to our homepage. Very nice. Everything is looking great. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's just click on this. We got all of that content loaded. A beauty. Now, maybe while I'm here, I can rearrange the content so it's not so repetitive. So maybe for dead, I'll switch it out to my yellow hoodie. Okay, I'm not mad about that. So then we have this BTS tee. I might switch it out to the white one just to break up that page. Then we got our, our eagles, our eagles crew neck. I really like that. So I'm gonna leave that one. Then maybe I'll move the Madonna one before Kesha. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Nice and colorful spread. I like that you can just immediately go in view the other ones when you scroll down to the bottom. I think that's a really nice touch. All right guys, so I have pretty much everything up on my site. I've got my merch tab. So let's look through here. We got nine individual galleries. Let's click in one. We got our little body copy right here and we've got all of our mock-ups right here. Now I thought about including like how these things can be purchased, but then I realized a lot of them were for tour or for pop-ups or something that you can't, you just can't get otherwise. So decided to not do that. So we got Dead & Company all set. We got BTS, let's double check. Cool, that's doing, looking great. We got the Eagles. Ooh, let's hit our previous and next tab. We got Jonas Brothers. Got those three T's right there. Got Madonna. Check out Kesha. Miss Sarah Borelli's. Shakira. And Poppy. Looking great. All right, so we can go over to our posters tab. And we've got these four bad boys right here. Looking great. So when you click on them, 
it'll open up into a light box, but I can't preview it because I'm still on the back end. Let's check out our photo tab. Nice, love, 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 love. Same thing with these. These will open up into light boxes and then you can just toggle through them. I'm really glad I went with these gifts. It really does a lot. And then YouTube will open into a new tab and then we can hit our press page, neat. So we got these three articles. My hand is getting sweaty again, oh my God. And then our about page. Ooh, photo of me. So then we got bio, we got our form all filled out, we got our drop down menu. Can I talk? Can I talk? I think my brain is shutting down. We have our drop down menu right here so people can specify what they're looking for and then I have a disclaimer right here so people can really be sure before they send me an email just so it doesn't get lost in my inbox. And then also we've got our social link down here. Okay, that is still linked. Cool, so that's still linked and that's that's it guys. That's how you redo a portfolio. So I hope you guys enjoyed redoing my portfolio with me. This is something that I've been putting off for a long time. And if you're a designer, I know how daunting it is to update a portfolio. It is a long and painstaking process, but luckily having a platform like Squarespace does make it a lot easier. All of the technical difficulties I had were on my end this whole video, but it's really nice to be able to just like drag and drop and move things around so I can spend time actually working on my mock-ups and making sure everything looks the way I want it to. I have good quality images and yeah, I get to work my branding. All of those things, I get to spend more time on those because I don't have to worry about the complexities of actually coding a website as much as I miss coding myself. So who knows if I'll add some more stuff as I continue to build my portfolio or I'll just keep it pretty simple. All the work I have up right now is just a pretty diverse set of work that I've done because I don't want to kind of like pigeonhole myself too much because I do enjoy doing a bunch of different things so everything that's in my portfolio I'm really excited about and that's the same thing that you guys should apply to your own portfolios make work and put work in your portfolio that you feel good about and it's work that you want to continue doing so that's why I cut out all of my other previous work experience and just cut it down to merchandise because that is mostly the content that I want to be working on I know this was a long one so I hope you enjoyed and learned a few things if you didn't know Squarespace inside out and backwards already I've been working in it for years I still every so often run into issues that I don't know how to solve, but luckily in Squarespace's site, they actually have articles and blog posts to pretty much how to do every single thing through each template. You can search by like individual issue of like, whether you're trying to fix a header, you have an issue with your gallery, chances are it's already answered in their blogs. So that's always like super helpful. It's helped me a million times. Whatever issue I'm having, I know I can just go and search in there and then they'll have like everything done for you. It's really easy. You can sort by like what template you're using and then you can just like sort from there about like the issue, whatever, I'm repeating myself, but you get, you guys get what I mean. So of course, again, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this big gigantic video. I had a lot of fun doing this because I like actually updating my work and seeing it all come together. I feel like I have a new haircut or something because I have a new logo and a new website. I'm really excited about it. So once you see this video, uh, my website will be up. I won't launch my website until the video is out and approved and everything. So go check it out. Go click around for yourself. Let me know if there are any issues should be good but of course if you want to start building a website or a portfolio with Squarespace hit the link in the description box below or go to squarespace.com slash kellorn k-e-l-l-u-r-e-n and you can get 10% off your first purchase with them um, I cannot recommend Squarespace enough I've been using them for almost five years now to host my portfolio so thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and also thank you to you guys for watching this super scary video to make but I'm glad that it's like over and out of the way and I'm really happy with how everything turned turned out too. If you'd like to see some other videos from me, like kind of like making mock-ups or like more on personal branding and how to venture down that path, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Is there anything else? My brain has turned into soup. I think it's time for me to go eat dinner. I'm very tired and quite hungry after all of this work. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. Babe, let's make tacos.